Psychiatric Illness for Beginners. Where did you get your interest in psychiatry? From my patients when I worked for 45 years as a family doctor. Then why do you work in the field of psychiatry? I don't. I work as a counsellor. But how can you help patients if you don't prescribe? I would ask that question the other way round. How can doctors help patients if they do prescribe drugs? What do you mean? In my rehab, I helped 5,000 inpatients over 23 years. I employed doctors, psychiatrists and psychologists, but I worked primarily as the head of the counselling team. That was the basic therapeutic work. I counsel people who've lost hope, or who've got themselves into such a mess one way or another that they can't function. They need psychiatrists and medications. That's not true. They need human understanding and support, and sometimes their ideas and values need challenging. That's not medical work. Yes, it is. These are the problems that patients most commonly take to doctors. The emotional problems of today become the physical and sometimes mental problems of tomorrow. But in much of family practice, the training is wrong for the job that patients ask doctors to do. Future doctors need to learn about real diseases first of all, not about social conditions and lifestyle choices. The curriculum is already crowded. All right. Let's look at what they're taught. A family doctor with an average number of patients will see only four new cases of cancer each year. One case of Crohn's disease every six years and one pheochromocytoma every 200 years. But we'll have 300 addicts of one kind or another on the books. But medical students have to be taught those things. I agree, but not to the exclusion of major problems that they will see every day of their professional lives, but largely leave undiagnosed and untreated. Doctors are busy. I know, I've been one. I'm not criticizing doctors, I'm saying that medical schools have got the balance wrong. You'd have all doctors practicing as social workers. No, I wouldn't. But our aim as doctors should be to put ourselves out of business, to focus on prevention whenever we can. Give me an example so that I can show you where you're wrong. Let's start with psychiatric diagnoses in the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual and in the International Classification of Diseases. They're made up. They're agreed by experienced doctors. Yes. The diagnoses become set in stone because the pharmaceutical companies say that they have drug treatments for such and such a diagnosis. And the private medical insurance companies say they will pay for those drugs and for specialist fee. You're being very disrespectful. I'm simply pointing out that there is institutional inertia in psychiatric ideas. Professional organizations issue guidelines. That's right, they do. Just try disagreeing with them. I would say that the DSM and the ICD are little more than a catalogue of various forms of unhappiness. That's preposterous. Indeed, and that illustrates the inertia. Doctors have to be safe and learn how to prescribe. Again, I agree. Three times as many patients die as a result of doctors' mistakes, often with drugs, as die in road accidents. You're undermining people's faith in their doctors. I hope I am in some ways. Doctors are not gods, and patients will be well advised to do everything they can to care for their own health responsibly. Patients' lives are sometimes very difficult. Social conditions cannot be helped with drugs. But the emotional stress can. I don't agree. Medicines get in the way of people learning to use their own resources. They lead to emotional as well as physical dependency. But many psychiatric conditions need to be treated with drugs. I agree. But there's too broad a belief in what constitutes the psychiatric condition. Drugs should only be used when there's no alternative. An acute psychosis cannot be calmed down simply by holding the patient's hand. But that's exactly what I'm saying. I'm not sure that we're fully in agreement. Have a look at tardive dyskinesia, the chlorpromazine shuffle, as it was sometimes called. These patients' brains have been dreadfully damaged by the drugs that doctors gave as treatments for psychotic breaks. They had to be given something. Yes, but not for so long. 
Patients diagnosed with schizophrenia in the Minnesota hospital were followed up 20 years later. Many were no longer taking medicines and had settled relationships and were in employment. Down and outs in New York did remarkably well when given basic accommodation and simple jobs to do. They had dignity. Doctors are judged by the courts and by their disciplinary councils on whether they do what their colleagues generally do. That's the inertia. New ideas are condemned because they're new ideas. You'll have mayhem. We've got mayhem already. For example, there are some established psychiatric conditions that may not exist at all. Borderline personality disorder is just an insult. Attention deficit hyperactivity disorder often disappears when the sufferer is given a computer game. It may be an early sign of an addictive tendency. Oh God, there you go again. And bipolar disorder is vastly overdiagnosed by doctors who don't understand alcoholism. Whatever it is, patients need medical help. I agree. But what kind of medical help? Any. No, I fundamentally disagree. Some of the things doctors do are barbaric. When depression is treated with electroconvulsive therapy or a frontal lobotomy, the treatment can be worse than the original clinical condition. They would not have been given it unless they were desperate. My fear is that doctors don't know what to do because they haven't been trained to intervene and help in more humane ways. Saving someone's life, preventing suicide, is very humane. That's precisely why I created my rehab. Our patients, on clinical testing, were found on average to have a higher level of suicidal ideas and general psychiatric disturbance than the average patients in psychiatric hospitals. Yet we had no suicides and no violence. Why not? Because if you treat patients in a mutually supportive group with respect and dignity, they will behave with respect and dignity. So what treatment methods did you use? A whole range of psychological approaches. Gestalt therapy, transaction analysis, choice theory, EMDR, psychodrama, you name it. Cognitive behavioural therapy? That's the one psychological approach that doctors tend to know about. But it doesn't work for patients like us who have emotional problems. But no drugs? Not after the initial detoxification. So what do your patients need? They need to work the 12-step program, first formulated by Alcoholics Anonymous, every day of their lives. So you condemn them to a life sentence? I suggest that they follow the 12-step program one day at a time. If you know a way of helping addicts with equally beneficial results or better, I should be glad to listen. I love new ideas. If I had the inertia of standard medical approaches, I'd be brain dead by now.